What is going on guys? This is obviously Jordan here, back again with another video. And if you haven't already guessed from the title, we're going to be talking about my investment in Square in the form of, you know, why I bought Square shares or shares in Square. Sounds a bit better, I guess, whatever. So today I put out a video, when? April maybe? March? I don't know, sometime early this year um, about how I, why I bought Tesla shares. And then not long later, I put another video about why I sold my Tesla shares. Um, even though in truth, I only sold part of my Tesla shares, not all of it. But if you want to check down in more detail, of course, check out the two videos. They will be in the iCards in this corner, I believe, wherever. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. This is, like, no, one, no one cares, man. 2020, man. But yeah, um, I put out a video about Tesla and it got way more reception, way better reception than I thought it would. Way more views, it got a lot of comments, a lot of people asking me questions about it online. So I thought, you know what, let me just do another insight video into my portfolio and what better company to go with next than Square. So I think, because I think some people aren't as, well, that's not even fair to say. Like obviously, because I invest, I know a lot more about investing than most people that don't invest. But for the people that don't know about Square, um, let me first draw some brief, brief, brief comparisons and contrasts, I guess, between Square and Tesla. Because I think some people who, some people who watched that watched it because it was just about Tesla. Like, I just thought it was cool. My friend Michael even commented, like, I, I read the title wrong. I thought you actually bought a title. Whatever. <laughs> so just to make sure this video is equally, you know, so I can draw some comparisons for the guys that maybe want something more technical or something that's more, a more fun company to talk about. I'm going to explain very quickly why I think Square and Tesla are in some ways comparable. Obviously, they're very different companies, but they're in some ways similar stock, I guess, to if you're like a, uh, what's it called? Wall Street bets type of person. If you're like a fun, oh, you know, betting, mm, then <laughs> you might find this a bit more fun as well. So um, just briefly, I think the first thing that is very similar with Tesla and Square is this, this right here, that graph. Look at that graph. Look at that juicy, juicy capital gains income. Tesla is up 484% this year. Imagine that. And at its peak, when it peaked at $498 just after the split, 613%. Like... Imagine, imagine that if you don't already invest and you don't appreciate how big the number is, like your expected returns for the average investor is probably between like five and 8% if you just invest in like index funds, or if you're like a Wall Street bets betting type of person, you're, it's probably like between like minus a hundred, <laughs> like to be fair, some of them do make money on Wall Street bets. I mean, not take the mic too much. But if you, if you don't know what you're doing, you can expect to usually make a loss if you don't know what you're doing, if you're just investing for the sake of it. And for some people who are a bit more know what they're doing, a bit more um, savvy, a bit more diverse, looking at index funds, probably like 5 to 8%, I think, is a good figure to make. Probably more closer to like 3 4 5% for most people, unless you really know what you're doing. <clears throat> so to go from like the peak of that, which is 8%, to 613 in its peak, or currently like 480 or whatever, but still, that is like, Impossible. It's not even unheard of. It's impossible <laughs> to grow by that much. Square, the similar similar type of graph here for Square is up like 180%. You just look at that. Look at that. Juicy, juicy capital gains, man. <laughs> That's going to be my merchandise whenever I get it. Juicy capital gains. But you know what I mean? Like it's it's crazy growth. Um, beyond like the, the, the fun, jokey side about it. They're both tech companies. Well, Tesla's technically an automotive company, but they most of the money comes from tech. Um, Square's obviously tech. Um, both Silicon Valley based. Both of their owners, of course, like Tesla, obviously Elon Musk. Um, Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, or co-founder of Twitter, he uh, is the owner of Square. So it's two, not necessarily two juggernauts. I think Elon Musk is kind of like here and Jack Dorsey is kind of like, I don't know if you can see my hand through like a different lens, but it's like way down like here somewhere, but <laughs> but there's still two like very interesting, very prominent, very like big figures I feel like. So Square is, it's, it's, it's an exciting company, you know, it's not like, it's not Tesla by no means. Um, if you want a Tesla equivalent, invest in NEO, that's another video I'll do next to be fair, uh, why I bought NEO shares, but Square is also pretty interesting as well. It's pretty cool. And I think as far as like bets go, like this actually, the platform that I used to buy this, that I've been showing you this graph, so this is free trade. Um, I also use Trader212. Both of them, I'll put links in the description below if you want to download that um, or check them out. On Free Trade and on Square, on Square and on um, Trade212, this is mostly is what I was investing. What I, they're not necessarily bets, but in some degree they are bets. Where it's like I do enough research to justify it to myself, 
but I don't, I've not gone into intricate detail. I know everything about Square and Tesla. Most of my investing is done through AJ Bell. I do it for a lifetime ISA, which is the equivalent to like an IRA, a Roth IRA, I think in, um, in uh, what's the place called? That terrible, disgusting, America. So that's the one, America. So um, <laughs> basically when, we, when you invest in an ISA, this country's an individual savings account. It's like tax free, basically. Um, you can your all of your gains aren't taxed, um, and the lease or so lifetime asset in particular, you get twenty five percent government bonus, which goes towards your house whenever you decide to buy a house, which is pretty cool. So I do most of my strategic, you know, logical, actual investing on there, which is mostly like in index funds, um, some REITs, REITs, and it's a lot more diverse, a lot more clever because I appreciate that it's got that that has to. <laughs> well, ideally, I want it to grow. Whereas like Square, if, if Square went bankrupt tomorrow. I'd be surprised, but I wouldn't be like mad annoyed because fundamentally, as I said, this is more like my, it's a bit of fun, kind of like aggressive, um, just gains, gains, gains. Um, and yeah, it's fun. So yeah, that I said all that just to say that this is not financial advice. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. Um, this is by no means me telling you what to do. I'm not, don't go out and buy or sell square based on what I have to say. Um, it's just entertainment properties only. I'm just giving you some insights into what I've got in my portfolio. Don't take it too seriously. I'm just a 22 year old that can't escape the University of Bristol. So let's take that for, take what you will from that and uh, let's begin. So before I talk about specifically why I bought Square, let's talk about what Square actually is as a company and why I still have Free Trade the app open on my phone, Pixel 4 XL. Shout out to Google and to Free Trade and to everyone else in the world that um, does things. <laughs> Square is currently worth 177. Um, I bought it for 40 seven pounds which is like 60 dollars i think at the time when i initially invested i put two i bought two shares um so I'm, I'm i'm not highly invested i mean to be fair for me that's quite a lot of money that's like 90 quid but um to most people it's obviously not that much it's like it's a smaller a small investment you could call it um according to free trades description of what square is square inc is a silicon valley payment services firm that provides payment hardware and software for small businesses payroll and more um, to me and to most people, it's probably just Cash App. <laughs> like most of us just know it as Cash App. Um, Square, they're not, it's not the same. Square own Cash App. It's not like Square are Cash App, but that's why I know them. That's why I discovered them. Um, and yeah, that's, that's that. So that's, that's who Square are. Let's talk about why I bought them. There are three main, main, main reasons. There are obviously loads of other smaller ones as well. Like, you know, just want to take a bet. But <laughs> there are three reasons why I bought them cool to buy, to buy Square. Um, the main reason, I guess the first, okay, yeah, no, the main reason is, it's hard to explain this one actually, but if it came from my upbringing in, you know, a low, you know, in a poorer, what's the, what's the political, political term for this? Like a, dis not a disadvantage, a working class background, there you go. Come from a working class background, uh, my parents never really, it's not like we were shopping at Waitrose, um, Marks and Spencers, it was always like Sainsbury's, Tesco, Little, trying to find the cheapest prices. Mum wouldn't even go to one shop. She'd like go to Sainsbury's first, pick up a few things that she knew was cheaper there, but otherwise she'd be like, okay, that's a pound, that's 80p, that's that. And then she go to Tesco's and they'd be like, oh, okay, damn it, that's more, it's cheaper in Sainsbury's. And then like we'd go back and it would be like a little a little tug of war to get the cheapest prices. Obviously now it's like um, price check and stuff, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So I also spent a lot of time growing up, um, any pocket change I had, I'd go to the corner shop, you know, I'd buy like penny sweets or um, once I hit like 10 years old, I didn't buy... I just, I bought packeted sweets because I don't really trust kids that just stick their hands in the penny sweet bag and put it in like coronavirus, man. <laughs> you got to be aware of that from like, when you're 10 plus. Um, but nah, like I, I went to concerts a lot. And as I was growing up, um, I don't know if I said this before, but when I was in school, I started selling sweets because I literally, as I said, my family upbringing wasn't the best. We didn't have the most money going around. So I ended up just working for my, myself, basically. I was selling sweets in school. Um, I was doing a few other bits as well. When I hit like 14, 15, I was doing ref I was refereeing football games. Uh, I've always been entrepreneurial. I've always had my own like my own desire to implement my autonomy on my own, right? So what that meant is I always had pocket change in my pockets, I always had money to spare. And I'd always go to corner shops every night. Well not always, but like, you know, that's that's the spot kind of like to buy your sweets, your drinks, whatever. And I was always annoyed. Like when I hit 15, maybe even 14, I got my first credit, my first debit card, even my bank account. I was like, yo, I can't even spend this card anywhere because it's not like I'm going to shops like uh, to buy clothes. My parents would usually buy like stuff left me, like school uniform and stuff. So I couldn't really ex use my card because the corner shops I went to only accepted cash. And I was like, why is this? So fast forward like 
12 years into life, uh, 12 years a day, I'm, all the shops now in London have like contactless cards. Uh, they all got card readers, even the little ones. And it's like, it's a utopia in, in some way. But it's like, the reason why they never had it before is because it was just so, so expensive and it's so hard to manage as well. Because these card readers, if you don't already know, they take a cut of every expense you, you know, every time you charge, every transaction, the terminal takes a cut. Because whoever makes that terminal always got to make their money back somehow, right? So for most of these corner shops, it never really made sense. And that's why some of the ones, you know, the odd few that did have these terminals, they would always say like two pound minimum spend, five pound minimum spend, ten pound minimum spend. And the reasoning for that is because they take a, they take a charge, right? If they, if you pay like less than two pound, I imagine the fixed rate was roughly two pound ish per transaction. Probably like grow, it grows up if you spend more money on it. But that essentially meant that they didn't make any money, or they probably made, even made a loss if you spent less than five pounds on your card. So it didn't make any sense to them. It just made way more sense to take the cash. Otherwise it's peak, otherwise they just don't make any money. And for a long time, I imagine that was a big problem, which is why Square, you know, comes in, saves a day, <laughs> and they've made these terminals. To be fair, I should I actually know the numbers. I had them on my phone literally two seconds ago, I don't anymore. But it's basically it's way cheaper. It's just way, way cheaper. I think they only take a transaction fee of like two percent or something, and that's it. They don't take like a fixed rate and then on top of that transaction fee, they don't take um there's no like individual setup charge or whatever, I think. I need to, you know what, don't, all of what I just said, ignore it, because I, I don't know for sure. But all I know is that it's way, way, way cheaper, which is why companies use it. And also, as the description said, it's software and hardware. So the hardware is the terminals, but the software ensures that they can do the tax valuations directly from the, the Square app. Every transaction, I guess, I'm guessing it's logged on their website, like you sold 10 grand today, um, we put 2K aside for tax, uh, we take X amount. And I imagine the software makes it, just so much easier for these vendors to use. Otherwise, it's like this mad expensive and it's a lot of like um, payroll stuff you've got to do behind the scenes to figure out how much money you made and how much money you got to pay back to them and tax and blah, 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 all of that, right? So Square and so many other companies as well in that same space have kind of filled that void. It's made it way easier for small businesses. Um, and that's great. You know, that's fundamentally that's one of the reasons because <laughs> I started, I've never actually seen a Square terminal in a shop, you know? I've seen the small white ones. I think people from London know what I'm talking about. When you go to like, oh, I forgot the name of the damn shop. <laughs> it's everywhere. Libra, Lycra, Libra, Libra, wherever. That corner shop is everywhere. But they've all got the same little white card reader terminals at Contabus as well. That's not square. I think it might be like Barclays or some, it's a bank, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, basically my point is that these terminals are more and more um, rife now. They're more common. You see it in more places now, particularly, of course, corner shops and smaller volume businesses. But in that space, of course, it's cheaper. And in that space, square exists. And Square, as I said, they offer the software platform as well, which is very, 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 very good. So I've read on the website. <laughs> and appreciating that, like as a kid, I appreciate seeing companies ad adhere to the wants and the needs even of people in that space. Like, of course, corner shops aren't just for, for young people, people that live in local areas. I imagine they're doing really well now with COVID-19 and going around. Well, you don't really want to go to St. Bruce Tesco's where maybe like all all the toilet roll has been gone since March. <laughs> you might want to go to your corner shop instead to support more businesses. And it's a lot easier if you can just pay by card instead of saying like a £10 minimum spend and all you want to buy is milk and you've got to pick up all this other stuff or even go to a cash point and withdraw cash where nowadays another problem exists where you've got to pay to take your money out. You've got to pay £1.95 flipping fee to take out £10. That's like 20%. You're literally paying tax on top of your tax money in the first place just because you can't pay <laughs> by card inside. That's another conversation for another day. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> the fact that they make hardware and software that tackles an actual relevant need um, in the community that I myself appreciate and recognize is one of the reasons why I bought into Square. Um, and also, I guess the main difference, uh, the main reason why I put Square as opposed to other competitors is that they make the software as well. So it's not just a terminal, they actually make the software that helps you with your payroll, helps you with your... Um, other money problems. I should have. I should have been more clear for this video. To be fair, but you know what I mean. Like it's just, it's a lot more comprehensive. It's a lot more easier to use. It's a lot more intuitive than these other software alternatives or these other hardware alternatives. Alternatives where it's all brought in house and done together, and it's all just it's all cool. It's all good. The second reason is because of I guess it's slightly like a test reference as well, but it's the relevance to the culture. Now, if you listen to any hip hop, any hip hop, any R and B, if you follow any. No social media of these like, artists, musicians, whatever. I'm sure you've heard of Cash App. I mentioned Cash App before as well. Square actually owned Cash App and they've done so much in the last few years in terms of like getting their brand image out. 
all these rappers, oh yeah, I cash up this, <laughs> you know, Joe Budden podcast as well. That's pretty um, synonymous with like the hip hop industry at the moment with, with people who are involved in that, in that industry, in that market, in that uh, culture. A lot of us know Joe Budden and he's sponsored by cash app. You know what I mean? Like you see the, you see the green logo everywhere. I remember when America were doing those um, stimulus checks, they said you can take it as a check, as a direct bank transfer, or as a cash app, you know, a stimulus. Like the fact that the government as well, even recognizing cash app is like a thing that is commonly used by the people, it says a lot about what this app is, the potential it has, and how synonymous isn't the right word, but you know, it's very, it's, it's just, it's, it's cash app, man. <laughs> Like, cause I bought into it before the stimulus checks as well. Like I bought this in like March, April. So that even goes to show that the, the, whatever I saw then, obviously the government in America also seeing, and the people are also seeing, communities are also seeing, which is why it just, you know, spirals up and up and up and up. I of course don't use Cash App as far as I know, it's only available in America. Um, but I think what makes it special is that it's similar to PayPal, but it's a lot more, I think, not hip it's such a nasty word to use but it's just, i think it's more intuitive i guess like people just give money on cash app as like because i think it directs it connects directly to your bank account i think paypal's got a few more extra steps even though it's a great app as well i, I also use paypal myself but i think cash app is very similar to that it's just a little more streamlined it seems like it's more intuitive like it's more user friendly and stuff like that so i've heard a lot about it I, i've done enough research again to suffice myself do your own research before you do anything like this but cash app is pretty cool um that's one big reason as well and not to mention, as I said, hip hop uh, relevancy. The fact that people are talking about it and they're sponsoring podcasts and that they're actually in some way ubiquitous, ubiquitous within the hip hop scene at the moment. Like that only goes to show how much potential there is in that market, especially as like hip hop heads and the younger people grow up into that and they see Cash App, they recognize the brand. And that's going to be like an evergreen market potentially where, you know, hip hop and rap is not the biggest brand or biggest um, genre in music. So that's, you know, take from that what you will. But I think it's a good sign. I think it's a good thing. I touched on that with Tesla as well. That's where the comparison comes from, where it's like brand image and how like people like it. There's an actual like herd mentality where it's like users and customers actually, you know, when you put aside the money, the finances, the economics, investments, blah, 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 do, like, do the customers like it? Do the users enjoy it? And the answer is yes. So that speaks volumes, you know, already for Cash App, uh, of course, owned by Square. Um, and the final reason, this is a bit more of a technical thing that I think only really... <laughs> not only me, but people that like tech or that are familiar with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, something that maybe only we can appreciate really, but Bitcoin and crypto is something that Square invested very heavily in from the get-go. In fact, I think a third of their revenue, not revenue, a third of their expenses or whatever, goes into their like Bitcoin mining uh, software on that side of the business. And even though Bitcoin blew up in like 2017. People been laughing at it. Laughing at it. Oh, Bitcoin, huh? You know, like it's just a fad. Oh, it came all the way up and it went back down. Fluctuations. Oh, you lost your money. How? Huh? Way. Cryptocurrency. Woo. Like, even though it's a bit of a meme. <laughs> I need to eat, man. I need to eat. But even though crypto is a bit of a meme in the, in the culture these days, I think it's hard to dismiss the potential it has. And it's hard to dismiss, like, because I feel like every trend, especially in tech and in science and in research, kind of has the same effect where it's like, it's very, yeah, no one really cares. And it blows up. Oh, virtual reality. Wow. Augmented reality. Whoa. Um, cryptocurrency kind of peaks and everyone's like super interested. And then you realize that it's actually a bit more further away than you think. It's not, you know, I remember when I first saw like AI and robotics and it's like, oh, wow, we're going to be like having I a robot and Terminator, then what you really get is like Google Assistant. And it's like, uh. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's way better now, but it's like when you're trying to sell AI and you sell them like an assistant, it's not quite the same as a flying robot. <laughs> but um, yeah, the adoption's obviously a bit slow. The research isn't as promising as you first thought. So the, the, the what's the word? What am I talking, what's it supposed to be? Like attention or whatever, kind of thickles out a bit, it slows. And then a couple of years later, then it blows up again. Then it's like, it actually comes into, then, you know, you have proper assistant works really well. You have that spot robot works really well. And these actual things that come out that are a whole, you know, all of the stuff that was mentioned in the past, you know, technology, uh, AI, machine learning, robotics, uh, Bitcoin, whatever, all these things kind of come together into one final product. And you see, oh, now I see why it's useful. Now I see why I want that. Now I see what the hype was about 10 years ago, right? And I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are very much showing that even right now in 2020, where the, those currencies have been doing the only ones basically to be doing very, 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 very well. As people are like losing faith in some of the governments with the way they're handling this pandemic and where crypto is like 
um, decentralized, not owned by any bank or company or government, people are flocking towards that. And it's like, we just want that security. You know, we want that. Um, let's be fair. I haven't done the proper research into it right now. Like I, I'm aware that it's growing. <laughs> I don't know there's the details, but I guess my uh, intuition would tell me that people just like the idea of having a decentralized system that's not, as, as, I, as I said, like controlled by these governments. You're kind of looking at it like, I don't really know what these guys are doing. Like, is it a lockdown? Is it not a lockdown? Or, you know, what's kind of going on? Whereas Bitcoin's like, it's kind of doing its own thing. It's over there, minding its own business, saying, yo, come over here, mine some, mine some coins. <laughs> and each, each Bitcoin is worth like, what, 20? No, 20 grand was its peak. Let me type it in now, BTC. By the way, I'm, I know I'm saying Bitcoin a lot. That's because I just know about Bitcoin the most. But there are way, it's 12,000 pounds. There are way more, like cryptocurrency represents, you know, basically crypto, like a digital and then currency, like pounds, dollars, euros, all of that. There are several different cryptocurrencies out there. Um, Euphor Euphorum? It is Euphorum, isn't it? They're a pretty good one. Um, I, don't, I myself haven't invested in it because I'm, I don't know enough to just put money into random things. Uh, what's it random things? Like it's, un, I guess, unproven things. But yeah, I mean, crypto is pretty big, man. Crypto is pretty big. And the fact that Square have made the stance from day one, like, look, we're going to put our money into crypto, into Bitcoin and Euphorium and blah, 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 blah. PayPal are doing it now as well. PayPal said recently, we're going to also invest into cryptocurrencies and you can now trade, not trade, you can now like use Bitcoin and PayPal. If you have like, if you just, if you just happen to have 12 grand in your account, <laughs> you can spend that one Bitcoin in the stores that allow it through PayPal, which you couldn't do in the past. So I don't know when they're bringing that into play. I think 2021, actually. So maybe it's about time I invest if it's not already cashed in. But the fact of the matter is, whether you think Bitcoin is real or not, or a scam, or if you think cryptocurrency is the big, the, the big thing, or if this is the fad or whatever, it's hard to dismiss, man. It's hard to dismiss. And technology very quickly, you know, it turns around very quickly. So I'm keeping an eye on it, of course. Um, and Square, as I said, they're taking a stance from day one. They're very early into it. So maybe they might take a loss, but then cash up kind of, you know, rise the back of that weight as well. And maybe they're right. Maybe like tomorrow people that realize, oh, Bitcoin, yeah, I want some of that. And then Square are like, they are the only, you know, payment firm that have that infrastructure in place that can just quickly, you know, flick a switch. And now suddenly everyone's paying on PayPal. PayPal? Everyone's paying with crypto and they're doing it through Square because they're the ones who allow it. And also PayPal, but maybe not through, you know, Goldman Sachs. I don't know what Goldman is saying about about crypto or uh, Bank of America, them man there. So, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> do some of your research. That's why I bought into it, of course. Those are the three reasons, of course, as I said, uh, cash up, cryptocurrency, and the fact that they work with, um, I shouldn't have done that. And <laughs> the fact that they work with, um, that they made the hardware and the software that is very useful and addresses a need, an actual need of these small businesses um, in smaller growing, in many cases, communities. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Again, if you liked this investment type style videos, let me know in the comments below. I do want to talk about NEO next. NEO are very, very, they're kind of like the Chinese Tesla. So that's, if you want to know about NEO, watch my video on Tesla. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously, I'm joking. Nothing that I say is financial advice. I want to get that in there one last time. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed, like the button. Like the button. Smash, obliterate the like button. Subscribe for more videos. Comment down below. We have to be on Instagram. And... Yeah, that's it. Peace.